Okay. I thought I would make this class um, a little bit more educational and then we can uh, answer questions. If y'all need some questions answered here and on the outside. Okay. Of course, we teach who the, who the 12 tribes of Israel are today. Next one. Yeah. Of course, like I said, um, when it comes to the 12 tribes of Israel, we know who they are today according to the Bible. There's also information on who, all, who are the Gentiles on the earth also. Gentiles are people on the outside of Israel. Just to give those a short Bible uh, understanding before we go into the lesson today. Of course, uh, in the mainstream religion, they teach it doesn't matter who anyone is in the earth. But that's a deceptive tool in itself. Like I've mentioned so many times before. The only reason they put out that it doesn't matter who people are is because everyone else is established in the earth except the children of Israel. Therefore, they're saying it doesn't matter to the people who don't know. All the established countries in the earth know exactly who they are. You go to China, you go to the Middle East, whatever the case is. So what I'm going to do is to see who's been up on what, they, what they've been studying. Before I go into our lesson today, we're going to take the first 30 minutes and I'm going to pick out some people. And they're going to give me scriptures proving who the 12 tribes of Israel are, starting with Judah. Okay, so if you don't have a pencil and paper, you probably need one so that once you get the answer, you have all the 12 tribes now. So we're going to start off just 12 tribes. And please don't use any social network Googling or internet page of the Gathering of Christ Church or any other thing to get your answer. All right. All right, we're going to start off with Judah. So, all right. Might as well start with you, Brother Mark. I need you to give me the scriptures if someone asks you who Judah is in the earth. Now, mind you, there's some people in Israel today who are claiming to be Jews. When you ask them, when you ask them who are, what family do they come from, they say they are the Cohens, they claim are from the tribe of Levi. But what about the rest of the people? What about the Rosens, the Rosenbergs, the, uh, the, the, Williams, the, the Williamsbergs, the, uh -huh, the Weissmans, and the on and on, the Cons, and on and on and on. Who are they? Even though the Cohens don't link to the priesthood of Levi at all. All right. But they claim they Levi, but they call themselves Jews. Jews, really, when you look at it, it's just a, an overall name for those who live in Judea. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. It's also a short term for Judah. Okay. Now, let's start there. All right, Mark, we, we're going into the Bible. Someone asked you, who is Judah? In, in, in three minutes, how would you answer that? Who is Judah today? Who is Judah today? I will go to uh, Genesis 49 and 8. You'll go to Genesis 49 and 8. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 8. Well, I'll start at verse 1. You go to Genesis 49. Okay, and let's read the 8th verse. 
Well, read, read. You're going to start at the first verse? Yeah, the first verse. Start at the first verse. Go ahead. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear the sons of Jacob. Now, the reason he went to Genesis 49 and 1 first is because this is the father given a prophecy of what will befall his sons in the last days. That was right. Because I ask you, who are they today? Not who they were back then. We're in the last days, so he went to Genesis 49 and 1 to show the prophecies of what would befall the children of Israel in the last days. Now, if the Jewish people or any other people in this earth don't fit the prophecies of the Father telling them what will befall them in the last days, by process of elimination, they cannot be the people. Period. Right? So I'm glad you went there first. That was good. What's next? Uh, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Judah art thou whom thy brethren shall praise. Go ahead. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thank you. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. How would you break that down? His brethren being the other tribes of Israel, they will mimic or follow what Judah does. That's one way of looking at it, but when it says praise, what is it really going into there? It's uh, really going into the fact that Christ comes from that tribe and the, the, the tribes that we're looking at, at Christ, because he's from Judah. Exactly. Christ come from the tribe of Judah. And you notice uh, in St. John 14 and 6 says what? It's evident. No, St. John 14 and 6. Get there, Azel. Go there real quick and read it for me. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he decided to unto them, I am the way, the truth, and, and the life. No man cometh come unto the Father but by me. Exactly. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Right? So all the tribes would need to come through who? To make it. Yeshua, Yeshua Judah. They would praise Judah. To make it, they would have to go through the seed of Judah, which is Christ. There is no savior coming from the tribe of Manasseh or Ephraim. You see that? Now that knocks the Jewish powers in Israel out of the box right there because they don't acknowledge Christ as one whom should be praised. So how can they be in confidence? within the 12 tribes of Israel concerning the prophecy that will befall Israel in the last days. When you go wherever Israel is, they're looking to who? Christ. Even in their ignorance, they're still praising who? Christ. Right? Now you do have some Messianic Jewish people who try to get in that way. Right? But they're still not praising Judah. Why? Because they're claiming they're the people, not the, the prophecies according to scriptures. And I'm going to show you that. What else you have there? It's him whom thy brother shall praise. Go ahead. Verse 9. Judah is the lion's No, you missed something. Thy hand shall be in the net of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now when it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, what does that mean? The, uh, the biggest enemy to Judah, that's where they will be living. Like right there next to them. Say that again. Where Judah and Israel's enemies live, that's exactly where Judah will be living, right there next to them. 
Exactly. That means wherever the, the rulership power is ruling, Judah would be right there in their empire or right next or close to the neck of their enemies, opposed to all the other tribes scattered in different places. If there's a superpower, power, Judah will be in the neck of that particular power. All right. The example of that is in the last days, who's the superpower? Exactly. Now, who's in the neck of the enemy? Judah. And then Judah, like you said, sets the trends for the earth. If Judah dresses a certain type of way, everyone else dresses a certain type of way. That cannot be applied to Jewish people. There's no people out there trying to follow what Jewish people are wearing or what they're doing. At all. A matter of fact, the Jewish power is using their finances to actually back us to set the trends in the earth. When it comes to music, fashion, everything, they know who has the flavor. That's why they put the money behind the flavor, as long as they can control it. Right? So it says, shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Why? Now, here's an example of that. What's the superpower in the earth today? America. Who's in the neck of the enemy? The so-called Negro. Right? Now, some people might say, well, the North Americans Indians were there. The other tribes are there. Yeah, but look, how, they were there before we were. Right? Before the black people were in America, right? Have you ever seen a North American Indian president? What about a Hispanic president? Why? Because they keep us close. They're watching us close. Why? There's another prophecy where it tell you that they're waiting for Jews. When Judah rise up, the other tribes rise also. So we're an indicator to the enemy. They need us close so they can understand what's going on with the rest of the tribes. Right? Their neck shall be, their hand shall be in the neck of their enemies. Another example of that. Right? When Christ was born, what happened? Who tried to take him out? Herod. Who's, what is Herod? An Edomite, a Roman. Tried to take Christ out. So by having, uh, by, by looking at the prophecies of Judah closely, they were looking to destroy one whom we would praise. They was playing us close back then. And they're doing the same thing today. Right? Him that, our, that, that thy brother shall praise. Read on. Thy hand shall be the neck of thine enemies. Now I'm going to show you a, a, pre, a precept that links to why the Most High put us close to our enemies. Let's go to Psalms 18 and 40. He put Judah right in the neck of the enemy. Why? Psalms 18 and 40. Read that, lawyer. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 40. Thou hast also given me the nets of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. That's crystal clear. He put us in position to take down those that hate the Most High. Who are those that hate the Most High? What is hatred towards the Most High? Huh? And exactly, because the love of the Most High is to keep His commandments, 1 John 5. So He put us in the neck of the enemies to destroy those who don't want to follow the laws of the Most High. Right? So it says, We'll be in the neck of thine enemies. Let's go back. Go ahead. Judah, right? Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Thou father's children shall bow down before thee. Go ahead. Verse 9. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Who shall rouse him up? So as you that's why the other nations have pacified Judah. 
See that? Because he's crouched down like an old lion. Everyone is waiting for Judah to rise. When Judah rise up in the whole world, the other tribes start reacting. The example, look what happened over there uh, uh, in the riots in the United States, of those that are, that are familiar with those riots in California. Almost tore the whole country down. I mean, the whole city down in L.A. with the Rodney King thing. They had to pull out the black preachers to stop. The, the police couldn't control it. Because when Judah rose up over there, you had Issachar rise up. You had Ephraim. All the tribes rose up together. But when we calmed down, everyone else calmed down. How do you? That's crystal clear. And I'm using America where the neck of the enemies are, where we had the neck of the enemies. Right? You never seen Issachar rise up and everybody go behind Issachar and start a riot. You never seen that happen with Ephraim. The same thing happened to them, happened to us. But when we rise up, then everyone is talking about it. It's a big deal. And this is what the, the powers that be understand. So they look to pacify us to a certain degree with socialism to keep us quiet. Right? Read on. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The gathering shall be unto Christ. Now that's the real new world order right there. I don't know what they're doing here. I don't know what type of order they call this. That's the real order. Okay? That's the real order. When Christ comes, he's going to gather all of us together again. That's going to be the, the new world order, the real order. Right? So that's Judah, who's being used at the neck of the enemy. Right? Now, what else you have on that? Anything else? Now, you always link that especially the dark tribes of Judea with Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and that closed the case. Because I don't know any Jewish people that went into slavery through slave ships. And speaking of that, when we were on a radio show this, this coming Wednesday, did you hear the show? Or you, you probably a little resting at that time, right? The one with the uh, Jewish professor? Yeah. yeah you listen to it? Yeah. You notice at the very... And he was going to come back on the show to, to, to answer questions. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, when he realized what was going on as far as scripture, he says, well, you know, he got to check his calendar. Why? How? And then, because he automatically went into a tailspin saying, well, listen, I support Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. My question is for these Christians, he was a Christian who claimed they support Israel. If you support Israel, why not support the 12 tribes of Israel? How can you support Israel and you don't know who Israel is? So immediately, when we started showing prophecy and things concerning scripture, why? Because he was going into the end days and all those things, but didn't want to admit those that are instituting the mark of the beast and all that and the technology of Satan are the Jewish powers. It was Einstein who was a Jewish guy. Darwin, Jewish guy. The one that split the atom and made the atom bomb. Jewish guy. The people that are teaching atheist teachings who are all institutions. Who's teaching unbelief against the Bible. These are all Jewish powers. So how can Christians say that I support Israel when these people are against the children of Israel? They don't support Israel. They support the Romans. But let's go to Benjamin now. Benjamin, show me who Benjamin is according to the scriptures. Ryan, a shark. Um, what? Genesis 49 and 27. 49, Genesis 49 and 27. Of course, if you deal, deal with Benjamin, we know who are who today. Uh, the Caribbeans. The people of the original people of the Caribbean. All right? That were taken from the shores of Africa. Now, of course, you go to Genesis 49 and 1, which shall befall thee in the last days. But he's going directly to, the, to Benjamin in Genesis 49 and where? 
Genesis 49. Gen oh, let me read it out, yeah. Genesis 49, 27. Genesis 49 and 27, read it. Uh, Benjamin shall govern as a wolf in the morning shall devour the prey, and at night shall divide the spoil. Benjamin shall do what? Raven as a wolf. Raven as a wolf, go ahead. And in the morning he shall devour the prey. And in the morning he shall devour the prey. Genesis 49 and 27. So how do you link that in with the Benjamites today? Um, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Is it through their singing? Yes. You know, the wolf howl to bring everyone together, to bring all the pack together, like what happened with the Jamaican music, not unlike some of the, the, the music today, which is total dest destruction compared to when everything Benjamin used to sing meant something. You know what I mean? It was some spirituality with it. It was awakening the people outside of gospel music. Even those that are that were secular became spiritual through Benjamin's music. So he's raving like a wolf, right? Calling and howling his people together like Benjamin do through his music. And what else? Um, I'm not sure what in the morning should have died, right? Well, in the morning shall devour the prey. An example of that is the Maroon tribe. The Maroon tribe, when they, first of all, they were the first tribe to actually take over a slave ship, right? And turn the ship back to Africa. They killed all the people on board, and right? I'll work out. I'll yeah, exactly. They killed all the people on board, took all the spoils that was on the ship, and took it back home and divided amongst their brothers. Yeah. Okay, and even when they were taken to Jamaica, they gathered together, the Maroon tribe gathered together to protect the people on the island against the British. Oh, okay, yeah, it's still, it's still good to this day, Exactly, exactly. So th that's the Maroon tribe, Benjamin, okay, of the West Indies. Right? So you have that. What else you got on Benjamin? That's it. Okay. Benjamin raving like a wolf. That's his music. And also, he divided, he divided the spoils, which is because they're warriors. They war down, they take you down, and they'll take your spoils and divide it. All right? So we more also for both you Benjamin. What else you got? Bring it. If anybody, if anyone can, can bring them out or, or attempt to before, before we get to, to the next one. one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Judah, both Benjamin and uh, Judah. Judah, I believe that it's been possible. Benjamin. All right. Let's go there. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. And uh, Benjamin, he said, that the daughter of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him. All the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. And you notice all the people that I'm bringing out, bringing forth, that we're speaking of, in to today can still be related to very spiritual people, people that are close to the Most High. The most spiritual people on earth. Right? That's another one of Deuteronomy dealing with Judah. Anyone? You can bring it. You can bring it out. Deuteronomy 33 and 7. Go ahead. It says, And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear the Lord divert uh, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him and be thou in help to him from his enemies. All right. So a real quick judge is basically what this is saying. It says, uh, bring him unto, unto his people. Speaking about the geographic location of Judah. When you look at the tribe of Judah, you got the America, North America. At the top, you got Canada, which has people of Gad. 
at the bottom you have South America. So Judah is surrounded by his brethren of the other tribes of Israel. Okay, that's what it means when it says bring them into his people. It and says, that happened through the slave ships. Right, right, exactly. It says, let his hands be sufficient for him. When you examine the, the tribe of Judah, once again, going back into him being in the neck of his enemies, when you look at the empire, the ruling power, Judah is right behind him when it comes to uh, technology, uh, advancements, and all these different things that a society needs to run. Okay? Judah is right there behind him, looking at the entertainment industry, looking at the sports uh, industry, the movie industry, any form of entertainment, Judah is right there. Exactly. Okay? Also looking at the black inventions, how basically no society can run without the inventions that were created by the children of Judah. That's what it means when it says, yes. let his hands be sufficient. Yeah. Okay. And some people might ask, um, if they were taken from the West Coast, like a similar question was asked, mm -hmm. how do you decipher Judah, Benjamin, and Levi? You have to realize in Africa, even till this day, we went into the lands as tribes, mm -hmm. the same way coming out of Egypt, we went in to the land as tribes. So when, so when Judah, Benjamin, and Levi ran into Africa after 70 AD, it's not like they intermingled in their camps amongst his Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They all had their own land according to families. We were always divided according to families. And you notice in Africa, you have tribes that never changed. So, so it's not like you cannot decipher and figure out who. When you go to a book called uh, Hebrewism in West Africa, it show you the divide. Even if we were in the same areas of land, we were still divided according to families. We never intermingled families. Judah would be with Judah, Benjamin will be with Benjamin and Levi will be with Levi. That's the way it was. And even till this day, that's how it is. They divide it by tribes and areas. You can go into each area and you can pick out each tribe accordingly as of today. Especially if you, uh, un 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 unless you go to a place like, uh, what's the place that was, that was given land after Marcus Garvey? Was that Liberia? Yeah. yeah. Of course, Liberia is a little different because Liberia took Judah back into that area. You understand? So Liberia is predominantly Judah in itself. Just Judah in Liberia. But you can go to different parts and pick out Benjamin. You can pick out Levi like a lot of the Ghanaians. A lot of them in tribes are Benjamin. Absolutely. So if you get the book Lost tribes, I mean, uh, uh, Hebrews in West Africa, it show you the divides of us in each area. Even though Israel went in there together, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they're to be deciphered. They're, they're different. There's a high number of Judah that went into Brazil through the slave trade, straight Brazil. That's why it says it shall be amongst his people, like it says in Deuteronomy 32. Judah was taken to the Americas, right there with the North American Indians, surrounded by the South Americans and, and Gadites that were in Canada, and we were taken into Brazil. Yeah, yeah, the Mexican border is right there, exactly. So we're surrounded by our people, right? So we got Judah, we have Benjamin. Okay, of course, we need Levi. So, I don't think we have a Levite up in here right now, but <coughs> Mike, I'll let you take Levi. Uh, Genesis 49 and 5. Genesis 49 and 5. Read. Uh, Genesis 49 and 5. It says, uh, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. Read it again. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Go Instrument, ahead. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. Instruments of cruelty is in Levi's habitation. Now, Levi is brethren with all the tribes of Israel. So why in particular it's saying that Levi and Simeon are brethren according to the last days? 
Because out of all the tribes, they are on an island together. Okay, there's not an island with, with, with part Ephraim and part Judah. There's not an island that's part Mexican on one side or Issachar and part Benjamin on the other side. But the brethren are together. That's why it says, what shall befall thee in the last days? On one side of the island, you've got the Dominicans, which is Simeon, showing you the prophecy of Simeon. And on the other side of the, the, the island, you have what? Haiti. It's actually one island, but in the last days, they would be living together, cohabitating with instruments of cruelty in their habitation. What is the, what is the instruments of cruelty? The witchcraft, the voodoo, the magic, the black magic. On the Dominican side, you are absolutely correct, correct, son. Santa Maria. So they're dealing with witchcraft, dark magic on that island. See that? Now, of course, Jewish people would like to take that on and say, well, that's talking about us. They are dealing, they are sorcerers. They are they do walk in all black and deal with high Kabbalah magic. They they are Satanists, but they they've always been that. That's no prophecy for them. They're dark priests. That's what they do. Our people were not supposed to deal with that stuff. There was laws concerning that. That's a regular practice for druids and warlocks. What else you got on Levi? Malachi 2. Now, why are you going to, to the book of Malachi? Just showing some more of the curses that, that, uh, on, on Levi. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Malachi 2 and 1. Oh, now, I mean, and now, O ye priests, this commandment is to you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Most High of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. And, and I will curse your blessing. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. See that? So there was a curse put on, Le on Levi, the priest. Why? It's in the scripture, why? Read. No, read what you were reading. It'll show you why before you go further. It'll show you the reason why. They didn't, give glory to his name. they didn't give glory to his name. They started dealing with who? Baal, Belly, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yeho Satan. They started using all their power to operate with Satan and didn't give glory to the Most High's name. Going back to that, we're speaking to this Christian guy on the show this coming week, dealing with the Most High's name, and one of his key points that he wanted to make before I was able to get on the show was we all call them different names, but it's the same name. Doesn't matter what you call them and all those things. And as soon as I went into, well, what did the Most High say according to the Bible? He, they wanted, he wanted to just cut the whole thing short and leave. <laughs> Why is it when we bring out the truth according to the Bible, these people want to scurry up and run after making serious damning statements against the Most High? Saying that you can call the Most High anything you want. Right. And then you look in the Bible, our people would we were destroyed for operating and calling on these other gods. I'm, we're reading in Malachi the curse of the priest giving glory to another God opposed to the most high's name. But they want to say his name doesn't matter. Why? Because his name has been eradicated out of Satan's societies in which we are in prison. That's why. Read on. Uh, verse 3. It says, Behold, I will corrupt your seed. And then even our people. You go to them and say, Well, listen, what the Most High said his name was. I am that I am. Why should would this even be a discussion going even any further? No longer will we take on the names that the Gentiles get given us. We're going to go by what the Most High told us. Period. And they want to fight back and, and, and go through all types of mess. Well, that's his title. That's not. Moses didn't ask the Most High his title. He asked them his name. 
And we have to keep fighting this and putting this in our people's mind. That's very important. Right? What else you have there? Uh, verse 3. If behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung up on your faces. I will spread dung on your faces, which, was, which is a curse to the priests. That's why I, out of all the tribes, they're really the lowest in means right now. And how they operate. They're eating dirt cakes to stay nourished. Read. Even the dung of your so your, your song of peace. Even the even the what? The dung of your song of peace. Go ahead. And one shall take you away with it. That's that was the destruction of the Levites. But of course, you go into Levi right there, Malachi the second chapter, showing the end of the priesthood. So how can Jewish people say they're from Cohen and they're the priest today when you go to Malachi and right now the priests in the last days are eating dung. They're down to dirt. They're down to nothing. So how can you how can the Cohens be the Levites in the last days? But I can take you to Haiti to prove to you according to prophecies who they are. They're with their brother Simeon and witchcraft is in their habitation and they've been brought low to the point where you know there's no resources for them no food they, they went from the highest being priest of the most high to the lowest that's why the scriptures tell you in Malachi the two, second chapter when you read down that he will make him base of all his brethren that Levi will become base that means the bottom okay so that's enough about Levi. And we almost covered Simeon in that too. So that, that was two for one there. All right, Yahweh, I need you to give me Issachar. 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 Now, one thing that came to came to me came to our understanding last night, and I was examining it. Right, looking at it. I'm looking at all the earth today, and and all the power in the earth, as far as military capability. Do you notice that Judah, Benjamin, and Levi nowhere? Out of all the nations and all the countries, they don't have a nuclear power. But some people say it doesn't matter. Everyone is the same. But why didn't you give Africa weapons to defend themselves if everyone's the same? Why is the Chinese more special than Africans? Why can't they have the same backing militarily as China why can't they have the same backing militarily as any country let's just say Pakistan which is which is Japheth why Pakistan got a nuclear missile and military capability why you didn't do that with Africa everyone's the same I thought everybody was equal everyone was equal right and they say whoever have a nuclear weapon usually that brings peace. Why? Because if you fight against them, you're wiped out. So the peaceful weapon in the United States today is a nuclear weapon. If you've got a nuclear weapon, not too many people are going to mess with you. Right? So if everyone's the same and everyone's equal, why are you not giving nuclear capability to Africa? You give it to China, Pakistan. Don't, don't say because of a black people they, they may go off and they're crazy. Let me tell you, there's no one more wild and crazier than the Middle Easterns. <laughs> I've been there. And I don't know how you can put a nuclear missile in, this, in Ishmael's hands. Right? You're talking about total confusion. So my question to you is why is it that black people can't have 
Africa don't have nuclear capability or military to defend themselves, but you can give it to China. Russia could have it. Pakistan could have it. Egypt could have it. Iran is about to, well, they already have it, but not, not, not telling people. So I thought everyone was equal. See, these, these are the conversations you have to talk to people who make you, be, who, who would try to brainwash you into believing that we're all the same. That everything is equal. It's not equal. So here it is. We got uh, we got Issachar. This is what? Issachar just sent that too. Issachar is a what? Genesis 49 and what verse? 14. And 14. Issachar is a what? Strong ass. Strong ass. Couched down between two burdens. Couched down between two burdens. Now you notice, I don't know if any of you have seen it, the south of the border emblem or banner. It shows Issachar, siesta with a hat, couched down between two donkeys next to him. That's the emblem of Mexico where it says south of the border. It's as if they went into the scriptures and made a banner for Mexico based on the scriptures. Now there's more, read. Verse 15. And he saw that his rest was good. He saw that his rest was good. That's siesta. When they have it at 12 noon. They all rest at siesta. 12 noon. Crystal clear. Y'all got that, right? And that's Issachar. Right? Now there's more because we go into, into Deuteronomy. It talks about how great of, of a land Issachar would receive. But you notice it says it's couched couch down between two asses. Why? Because they deal with burdens. Working. Read on in Issachar. And the land that it was pleasant. And the land that it was pleasant. At least Deuteronomy 33 also. They got pleasant land, but they're subject or tribute to a burden, which is work. When you go into America, you, it, you can see the Mexicans are, are run over the board and almost kill themselves just to make $15, $20 a day in American money. Why? Because America have devalued the money over in Mexico and have destroyed the whole country through drug cartels, through the drug gang, and gave all power to the criminals and made them drug cartels as weapons against their own people. So just say hypothetically, you have some Mexicans who came, came together and say, well, listen, I want to take back our communities and set things up righteously for my family. And so that we can live right in the future, the cartels won't allow it. Soon as they see you coming together over Mexico, America and the Western world fund these criminals to go into a city or whatever and break it apart and kill, kill the person and kill the people who are trying to unify. That's why Mexico can't come together and set up cartels and killers and torturers and all that in the area. And they do, and then. And then they report back to America that these are just fights, internal wars within Mexico, when it's America funding and giving weapons to the drug cartels. In America right now, Barack Obama did it along with Holder. Two black men now, under their administration, Fast and Furious, where they shipped all these guns to Mexico and gave it to the cartels so that they can say that we have a problem over in Mexico. What they're really doing is sending the weapons over to destroy the people of Mexico. And then once the, the, the arms are confiscated, they can claim that they were shipped over there illegally or whatever the case is, and there's some bad uh, uh, networking with guns. We have to stop this in America. We have to shut down the gun stores in America. That's what they were looking to do. But again, I'm just showing you how they operate. 
against Israel all over the earth. You think these terrorist networks and the CIA and all that is set up to stop bad guys. They don't have anything to do with that. It's about disrupting and coming against Israel all over the earth. That's what the real war on terror is. Right? You got Issachar. Right? Shut the door. Okay, what's next? You got this, Sakar. All right, let's get Naphtali. Go ahead, Benjamin, you get Naphtali for me. Naphtali. Uh, 49 and 27. Read it. Naphtali is a hind let loose. Naphtali is a hind let loose. Go ahead. He giveth goodly words. He giveth goodly words. So who is Naphtali? Today. You can help him. Uh, that's the Polynesians and Hawaiians. The Polynesians and Hawaiians, exactly. Oh, I'm gonna call you soon. I got you. That's the Polynesians and the Hawaiians. They give goodly words. When you land into Hawaii or into the South Pacifics, what do they say to you? Aloha. Aloha. They give goodly words. And they are hind let loose. Right? They talk, and it, it, there's another precept. Let's get the other precept for it. Of Naphtali. Finish reading what you have. Okay, don't, don't, don't deal with Joseph right now. Let's get more and more precept for Naphtali. Read it, read it for me. Deuteronomy 33, verse 23. Verse 23, go ahead. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali. O Naphtali. Satisfy with favor. Satisfy with what? With favor. With favor, because they're very beautiful people, good looking people. They're very favorable in looks. Go ahead. And full with the blessings of the Most High. And full with the blessings of the Most High. Go ahead. Possesses thou the west and the south. You notice how it says the west and the south? That'll throw people off if you just read the English. In the Hebrew, west is not there. In the Hebrew, it's South Seas. South Seas. Which is what? The South Pacific. What will befall be in the last days? Geographical location. See that? They translated it because how can you, how can one person inhabit two separate directions? <laughs> The, the, it says the west and the south. No. It's the seas in the south. South Pacific seas. The Polynesians, Fiji Islands, so and so forth. These are all the children of Israel. They are Naphtali, like Palomalo, who plays football. Okay? Like The Rock. The wrestler. He's from... He's from there. His parents are from there. Okay. They are Naphtali. Read on what you have in Deuteronomy. Okay. Who else? And you notice the same as the Asian, uh, the Edomites who took us over in America. You notice over in the South Pacific, so I've been there, in Hawaii, you have the Asians who took them over, who was controlling them over that area for a long while. 
in the South Pacific Seas. Right? Read on. Let's get the next one here. Let's get Ephraim. He's uh, you can grab Ephraim for me. Genesis 49, 22. Yes. Genesis chapter 29, verse 22. Joseph is fruitful, but fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a bow, whose branches run over the wall. Basically, that's something like they, they multiply. Multiply, they're fruitful, have a lot of children, as if you would have a fruitful bowl or a tree next to water. It will grow strong. And it says they grow over the wall. They like to stay close together. And you know, we live in Ephraim territory, so you know what's going on with that. They could they have a whole block <laughs> together. They not leave, they're not going too far from their house. All right. Go ahead. The archers have surely grieved him. The archers have surely grieved them. Who was the archers? The conquistadors. When the Spaniards came and were using their arrows against them, the archers have surely grieved them. There's a book called The American Holocaust to let you to show you uh, that. They got Ephraim down to 500,000 man child, the conquistadors. Mm -hmm. A half a million people. And they were living in that area for years. There was millions of men in, in, um, in so-called Puerto Rico before the Spaniards came, the conquistadors. They killed them down to 500,000 man child. And it, it show you in the, uh, the American Holocaust, in the book, it show you how when the Spaniards came over just to put fear in the mothers, they would wait till a newborn baby is born, take the baby, and then they would grab each leg like a wishbone, and each man would pull the baby apart to see who can get the larger part of the baby as gain. No, don't worry about it. They came to bring Jesus. They came to bring peace and love. And nothing never changed. It was all about love. So people might ask, well, why don't they do that now? They don't need to. We've been conditioned. We've been re-educated. All right? So, keep on continue with Issachar. The archers had surely grieved them. Go ahead. And shoot at him and hated him. And shoot at him and hated him. Read on. Verse 24. But his bow abode, abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty, of the mighty, of the mighty power of Jacob. For thence is, is the shepherd of the stone of Israel, even by the most high of thy father, the God of their father, the God of their father shall help thee. The God of thy father shall help thee. Read on. And by by the Almighty, who shall bless with blessings of, of heaven above, blessings of deep that lie under blessings of the of, of the breast and and of the wind, and the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of them. Okay. And it's speaking of the land, the rich and powerful land that Ephraim have possessed and the land of so-called Puerto Rico. All right, now there's more in Ephraim. Who have it? Hosea, six and eight. Hosea not six and eight, you close. There you go, read it. 
Ephraim have mixed himself among the people. Read. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Ephraim is a cake not turned. To show you, if you have a cake not turned, it's light on one side and it's dark on the other side. Okay? Show you that Ephraim also go through what we would call identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Alright? You, you see him as dark as I am, and then you will see another one trying to be European. Okay? You, they'll be real light, but have the curly kinky hair, and they'll try to straighten their hair to pass off as Caucasian. Same thing with the men. This Ephraim has mixed themselves. Okay? When it says have mixed themselves, they have purposely went through time. They have purposely went to, to deal with Caucasians or others as total hatred against their dark lineage, against their dark heritage. Some of them won't even deal or don't, won't even speak to, to black people. And there's black people amongst Puerto Ricans. Like the boxer, what's his name? Trinidad. He looked like a Negro. No, he's Ephraim. That's why it says a prophecy, Ephraim is a cake unturned. Light, real light, and they're real dark. But they're Ephraim nonetheless. Okay. Now, okay, go ahead. Uh, real quick, just also an example of that hatred that uh, Ephraim and the other uh, Indian tribes of the southern parts of America have for themselves. If you look at uh, Sammy Sosa, and what he did to himself, who was a oh dark skin. He, he was one of one of those tribes who fall under uh, Ephraim or the yeah. Indian tribes, and he eventually, at one point, was dark skin, very dark. Yeah. Then he lightened himself. Yes, and he was from Cuba. Right. So but you know, Ephraim and Manasseh are brethren, so right. that prophecy of Ephraim goes on both. Right. So all those tribes. But, that yeah, Sammy Sosa, the guy that was getting steroided up with with the uh, in baseball. He ended up turning himself light skinned through bleaching himself. This identity crisis with our people. Think is, we think that it's not the way the Most High made it sometimes is not good enough. Right? So when you look at the properties of Ephraim, it really encompasses Cuba also, which is Manasseh. Their properties are the same. Right? And that goes to us too. Uh, a lot of us, even outside of that, a different conversation altogether. Is it's okay, it's okay to feel good about the way the Most High made us? And not frustrate ourselves when we look at ourselves and think that we're ugly or something is wrong with us. Okay? If you, if, if some, if you operate, if we operate like that, I'm telling you, you've been psychologically programmed to believe something adverse. The Most High made each one of us perfect the way he intended, the way he seen us. And that's good enough for me. I don't got to look like no one else. Or Listen, the way the Most High wanted me, I'm good enough for that. I'm not going to look at myself and be like, man, I... I I think I got to perm my hair. I think I, I, you know, I think I got to go get me a nose job. I, that's totally unnecessary. The most I was looking at you like, I form you. What's wrong with you? To show you that's part of the programming through mainstream media. Okay? They want sisters to look and arrest. Sisters was made to look like they got some, some body with them. You understand? Some strength. They're not... You ain't supposed to be looking pencil thin like that. That's sick people. But they have programmed you to believe that something is wrong with you if you have weight. Chaotic. All right? What else you have? Okay, who else we... Okay, who else we got there? We got Ephraim, we got Manasseh, we got Issachar, we got Benjamin. Yeah, let's get Gad. Gad, 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 Gad. 
Come on, come on, come on, Santee, give me gas now. Oh, you thought we was going to let you go, huh? <laughs> give us gas. Gad. Of course, it's like uh, Genesis 49. Uh, Genesis 49 and what? 19. 49 and 19. 19. Read it. Gad. Yeah. A troop shall overcome him. A troop shall overcome Gad. Uh, but he shall overcome. But he shall overcome at the last. So, okay, yeah, this is Sammy Sosa from Dominican Republic. Okay. All right. But when you, those curses do fall on all the tribes, which were part of the ten tribes, because Ephraim was the head of the northern kingdom. So when you see when it says Ephraim is a cake unturned, that also applies to the other tribes. The same complex is on them also. Read that again. Um, yeah, a troop shall overcome them, but, overcome them read. But he, shall overcome but he shall overcome at the last. Okay, what is that troop that overcame Gad? Uh, uh, the U.S. Calvary. The U.S. Calvary is the troop that overcame Gad. They um, use divide and conquer tactics. They use treaty tactics. Let's get that. In Psalms. Uh, Psalms chapter 55 verse 20. Read it. He hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with them. He had put forth his hand at such that be at peace with him. Talking about Edom. Read. He had broken his covenant. He had broken his covenant, which is peace treaties. You can't make a peace treaty because when they come to make peace, they're really looking to occupy your space long enough to find how to get you off the land altogether. You cannot make a treaty with the Roman Empire. They're not coming to live amongst you. They're coming to roll over you. Read. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Read. But war was in his heart. What was in his heart? But war was in his heart. But war was in the Edomites, in the Romans, the Europeans' heart. Read. His words were softer than oil. And his words were softer than oil. Yet were swords, excuse me, yet were they drawn swords. But yet were they drawn swords. Thanksgiving feast. Most people don't know that the Thanksgiving feast started out, it was supposed to be a peace pact. The Indian chiefs came unarmed, and it was a massacre of them and their family, their wives and their children. Happy Thanksgiving. It was a peace treaty they were supposed to agree with. And the Indians came unarmed. And the cavalry came and destroyed their chiefs. Killed their women and children. Right? See that? It's no wonder today uh, the institutions uh, tell you, well, the Bible just, play, it really doesn't matter. There's even questions whether or not these people have actually existed. You know, Bible, who cares about the Bible anymore? When you read, you understand, it points to the culprits. And it also gives light and understanding to the children of Israel why we're dealing with these conditions in the earth today. Right? What's next? Let's get Asher. Uh, it's also like scripture, yeah. 
Come on, give it to me. Second Edges 13 and 39 on down when it goes into they came into a new land where no mankind dwelt. And at the end, when they shall begin to come, he shall make still the waters to come back over. And as you can see, where it tell you at the very end of that scripture in Genesis that Gad will overcome at the end. And that's in Hopi prophecy. There's a book of Hopi prophecies that tells them that what will, what will happen at the very end. Now, the Hopi prophecy, a lot of people don't know this. The Hopi prophecy, the majority, all of it really came from Christ. When Christ died, he visited the ten kingdoms, the ten tribes over in, in America between the three days. He talked with their, with their priests. He talked with their chiefs. Some people might ask, well, where is that? How do you know that? Well, when Joseph Smith came over to the Americas, he found the golden tablets of Christ coming there. And he took the golden tablets and translated it into what we call the Book of Mormons, but they took out key information. Right? Christ, that three days wasn't just him in the earth. He, had, he also visited the ten tribes over in the Americas. Now, how do we know this? Let's get St. John, the 7th chapter. So when the priests were linking into the Most High, don't forget in 2nd Edris, I mean in 2nd Kings 17, they were looking to go into the new world to keep the law that they couldn't keep in their own land. Remember that? So you still had priests over in America who were looking to serve Ahia. And you notice that's a name that the Indians called on. Ahaya. Ahaya, 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 ahaya. That's the name they called them. Okay. Let's get St. John 7 and 33. Read it. Uh, St. John chapter 7, verse 33. Then said Yeshaya unto them. Then said Yeshaya unto the disciples. Yet a little while I am, am I with you. A little while am I with you. And then I go unto them, unto him that sent me. Then I go unto him who sent me. Verse 34. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Where I am, you cannot come. Read. Verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Where will he go? Read. That we shall not find him. That we shall not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles? Read. And teach the Gentiles? Showing you that our people were called what? Gentiles outside of the area where Christ was. So they knew that the gospel had to be taught or the message had to be sent to some place else. Outside of those of the southern kingdom. So they was asking, is he going to go to them? And teach them, and it's proof he did. He, they left records in the burial grounds of the North American Indians, and that's where they received the majority of the Hopi prophecies of the North American Indians. From the tablets that Joseph Smith, the Mason, the Satanist, stole. And you notice when the Europeans came over, which were Masons who stole this information, they wrote themselves in to the Book of Mormons, claiming that the Europeans are from the tribe of Ephraim. They admit that the North American Indians are from the tribe of, <laughs> of Israel. But every time you look, they're trying to jump up into anything. And at the same time, they sent Joseph Smith as a switch and bait or a diversion. There was another European that came back to Europe to tell them that he think he found the children of Israel. He was a he was a uh, a Christian minister from England, and he came over to America to say, "Man, I think these are the people, according to the scriptures. They're keeping all the same laws." 
So what did the Europeans do? They sent Joseph Smith over. <laughs> okay? They sent Joseph Smith over. So that if anyone uh, go into the story of the North American Indians being from the tribe of Israel, they would now have to funnel through this garbage that's attributed with Gad, with the Book of Mormons. So they sent him to discredit that information. Because now you talk about the North American Indians being the tribe of Gad, Israel, they'd be like, well, yeah, you're dealing with those Mormons, huh? Because Mormons deal with all types of stuff that God came down and knocked on Mary's door and had sex with her. That's all in the Mormon. So they purposely muddy all the tablets that was given to the North American Indians. This is what they do. All right. Who else we got here? Asher. We almost through. Asher. Okay, uh, recall a lot. Asher. Go ahead. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fed, and his and he shall yield royal dainties. He shall yield royal dainties. Go ahead. Okay, there's more. Yeah, let's get it. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 12. Deuteronomy 33 and 24, go ahead. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brother. Go ahead. And let him dip his foot in oil. And let him dip his foot in what? In oil. In oil. Exactly. So if you look at the areas that's rich in oil in the Americas, you want to know who the tribe of Asher is. Venezuela. Which of that? They're Asher. All the way down through Argentina. All that's oil. That's Asher. Asher. Argentina. All the way into the parts of Brazil. That's Asher. Except for the Negroes who were taken into Brazil from the slave trade. The other people are from the tribe of Asher. You got that? Okay. Thank you. Reuben. Reuben. What you got? Let's read it. Genesis 49 and 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Go ahead. Unstable as water. Unstable as water. Go ahead. Thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not excel. So out of all the brethren, you will not excel. Right? Now, even though he was the firstborn, to show you why Reuben did not get the inheritance of the firstborn. Who eventually received the inheritance of the firstborn? Judah. I mean... Joseph got the firstborn. Joseph got the firstborn, but I'm talking about through Christ. Oh, right. right. Through Christ, he eventually got... Judah right. got the position of the first. Right. It's going to show you. Read. Now, Ephraim got the firstborn over Manasseh. Right. Right? Go ahead. Uh, but save this world, thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not excel. Read. Because thou went, went to walk into thy father's bed. Because thou went up to thy father's bed. He slept with his wife's uh, uh, concubine. Read. His father's concubine. Excuse me. Read. 
Then defileth thou it. He went up to my couch. So he dealt with his father's concubine. Therefore he was cursed. Is that right? So he could not excel. Where is Reuben today? He's, he's the, 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 the indigenous tribes of where? Australia. Australia. And if you go into Australia today, they're still living like nomads. They're back in the Stone Age in those village areas. They didn't excel. Don't tell me the scriptures are not cold. And here's something that's really, that blew me away. And, and you have to realize, I didn't have no geographical education or understanding of, the, of a lot of these people personally. When we, when myself and Elder Zai put out the 12 tribes breakdown according to the scriptures. You understand? But there was only a few people in the earth that fit the prophecies accordingly. After we put the 12 tribes of Israel out, I, I think I told this story before. I mean, I mean as far as on, a, on, on an international scale, a woman who visited Australia from England who was living in Australia. She said, she said it was utterly amazing to hear the teachings. She'd been to church and she'd never heard anything like this in the Bible before. And it blew her away that when she went to visit the, uh, the Aborigines, the, pe the indigenous people of Australia, they told her sh that, that, that they were from the tribe of Reuben, but don't know how they got to Australia. She went and spoke to one of the chiefs just to see if what we were saying was true. Like, this can't be. And she was in Australia from England. She wrote a letter. She says, you wouldn't believe this. She said, I went into the bushes way back, and I talked to her. And they, they got guts like that. I'm not going to go into another country and just go into a bush and try to. I'm not going out like that. But she said, she went in the bushes and went through. You see, they, they be having some guts. I'm talking about they're they women and everything. Like, listen, I'm just going through. <laughs> and she said, one of the chiefs told her that, yeah, we're from the tribe of Reuben, but we don't know how we got in Australia. She said she was blown away. She, she, she sat down with them, and she even showed them out of the Bible the prophecies of them coming and what would happen to them. A, a, a priest that was in Australia. I was blown away. I've never went to Australia before. But the prophecies linked in to certain people. Right? Mm -hmm. Also, there was a, uh, someone who sent an email not too long ago. I don't yeah. know if you read it. A brother who said he was a part of the uh, Mormon church. I think he was a priest in the Mormon church. He's a priest? In, I didn't get he, You read that? Uh, yeah. I think he was a part of the, just a member or a priest. And one of the priests of the Mormon church told him that he was of the tribe of Judah during the time that he was in the Mormon church. And this was a brother who used to be a member of the Mormons. He was a black guy? Yeah. And the Mormons told him that he was from the tribe of Judah. Yep. They told him he was of Judah. I think the Mormons are looking at these lessons somewhere. <laughs> but they knew for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else you have on Reuben? We are, well, we got Reuben. Let's get through it because there's a few things I, I want to answer some questions here. Zebulon. Zebulon. Genesis 49 and 13. Genesis 49 and 13. Read it. Genesis chapter 49, verse 13. Zebulon shall dwell at the, at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for a haven of ship, haven of ships. He shall be for a haven of ships. Now, what land borders both oceans? The Panama Canal. So when you look at them, those in Costa Rica, all in that area, right next to there, that Panama Canal is where the tribe of Zebulun reside. Got that? 
That's where the tribe of Zebulun, a matter of fact, of course, going back to scripture, how they break every agreement or every covenant. You noticed about, what's, what's, what year was that? That was what, 1992, 1994 or something, when, when America under Bill Clinton went mm -hmm. into Panama to get uh, Noriega. Mm -hmm. And they was claiming they was taking them down because of some drugs. And we know that they control the drugs. The bankers and all that. Mm -hmm. All their families control the drugs and they use it as a substance to get into every, or to destroy and take over every empire. Common sense. They've done it for years. They didn't really go in there to get Noriega. That wasn't the problem. The whole deal is, if Noriega was, would have st withstood one more year, there was a treaty with the United Nations in America that if Panama had their own standing army by a certain date, that the Panama Canal reverts back to the citizens of Panama. So they came in, they went into Panama to destroy any standing army. Therefore, when the treaty was up by default, America and the UN could continu continue to control Panama. It had nothing to do with drugs or Noriega. It was to make sure that that peace treaty be destroyed. And through that, the infrastructure would continue through the United States and they would control the Panama Canal. So let me tell you, if Noriega and the Panamanians and the people there got control over their own haven of ships and their own coast, they would, need, they would need no drugs and no drug deal. They would control all the ports. See that? But then that's still them destroying our people, not telling us who our people are, but our father, Jacob, told us what would befall us in the last days. So this is how we know, okay, we know where our brother Zebulun is now. Because what place do we reside in which ships, where there's a haven of ships amongst our people? It's only one place. Panama. Crystal clear. Why? Because it trades on both sides of the equator. It havens both oceans. Y'all got that? You got that? Go ahead. Dan. We have Dan. Let's go to Dan. Genesis 49. Verse 16. Then shall judge then shall judge his people as one of, of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Now why did why did it say that Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel? I thought Dan was a tribe of Israel. So why does it say Dan so judges people as one of the tribes of Israel? Read. Dan shall be a serpent by the way. He, he shall be a serpent by the way. Read. And adder in the path that biteth the horse hill. He's an adder in the path that biteth the horse's hill. Right? An adder is a serpent with a venomous serpent with poison. So that means he will destroy or bite or poison, will be poisoned within the children of Israel. Read. So that his rider shall fall backwards. So his rider shall fall backwards. So he was there to try to take us down. He moved to the other side. Would it tell you that? He would judge as one of the tribes of Israel. He took a position in which the Most High didn't give him. Under, under the judges, he linked them with Satan and started building temples to Azareth and to Moloch and the different gods. Eventually, he linked in with the Gentile powers and, got pos and, and received position for a time and a rulership in the earth. Dan predominantly geographically, if you want to know geographically, they're the people that borders, that borders Turkey, 
on the Mediterranean side, uh, Lebanon, Tyre and Zidane, all those areas out on the outer skirts of the Mediterranean are all Dan. And they are what the Catholic Church calls the Greek Orthodox or the Merovingians that's against the Catholic Church. They were together against us at one time, but now the Catholic Church have been fighting against them. The Greek Orthodox Church was set up through Dan. The Spartans were Danites. So they linked up with the Romans, I mean with the Grecians against us. And the Most High have now cut them off from being a tribe. So they're not mentioned as a tribe in Revelation 7. Why? Because they receive their power and rulership on this side of Christ's dominion. So they're not going to receive dominion on the other side. They got their agreement through the serpent, Satan. They fought, they fought against us. Another thing, which will be in the full breakdown of Dan, which we're going to release for the brothers and sisters. Something else that happened with Dan. Dan used to work, he was, his, his major work was him linking in and dealing with uh, vortexes, which was uh, the designs of temples that would allow spirits to come into the temple. That was his design. That's what he was used for when the original temple was built. The places where the Most High would come down and, and deal with the people, Dan was designing and dealing with all that. So he had understanding how to take a building and design it through symbols to allow spirits to come into a building. That's why the Gentiles wanted to use Dan technology through symbolism to hold spirits to control within the earth. He had, he had those designs. Spiritually and physically, he had those designs. So he was used to build temples. Esau and all the other nations used Dan for that purpose. And when they build a construct, they know how to build it now to allow spirits to come in and they can trap the spirits and utilize the spirits against people. This is what Dan did. Okay, so in our lesson with Dan, we're going to go into all that and how he was double crossed. And there's a fight between the Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox Church, which Dan established. But they both are under Satan, but they both buy in for for power within the earth. All right. The people of Lebanon. Some of the people of Syria are actually Dan also. Those of the island of Kittim. 100% Dan. Okay. Yeah. And when you, you meet them, you know them, they... they they look just like Issachar. They look just like Ephraim. They look just like the other tribes. Right? Did we miss anyone? We got everyone? We got everyone? Yeah. Okay, good. Make sure y'all wrote that down. Give y'all a good educational lesson real quick. I'm glad a lot of y'all are on point. Praise the most high on that. All right. The next thing. What time is it? Well, okay, we got about 30 minutes. All right. What I'm going to do, we're going to go into the law next week and have a different lesson for Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, next week. Okay, we're going to deal with that next week, Ezekiel 38 chapter, going into Iran. We wanted to break down the 12 tribes of Israel because through these shows we've been doing and we talk to Christians, they all tell us it doesn't matter who the 12 tribes of Israel is. My question is, if it doesn't matter, why would Jacob tell his family, his sons, this is what shall befall thee in the last days. 
And if we're living in the last days, how can we understand prophecy and not relate it to what will befall the 12 tribes of Israel in the last days? How can you break down prophecy? It's impossible. All the prophecy is speaking of is the fall and the rise of the children of, the, of Israel, the children of the book. So they'll tell you it doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. You cannot break down the prophecy of the book and not know the people of the book. That's crystal clear. That's crystal clear. All right. Now what I'm going to do, because I didn't want to go over too far over today. Um, I'll answer questions. If y'all have questions, I'll answer them. Whatever the questions may be, let's get them all out right now. And if you have questions out there, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you all might have. Another thing I wanted to say real quick, which is off the hinges, linking into the lesson we had today. Earlier, early in the morning, I went into, I, I really wanted to look into the areas of which they have nuclear capability throughout the four corners of the earth, like where they have actual nuclear plants. Now, in South, parts of South America, they don't have nuclear plants there. Okay, but through agreements, Venezuela have nuclear missiles. They don't have nuclear plants, which means they can't enrich their own uranium, but they do have nuclear weapons. So what I did was I looked at a map and I wanted to see what countries actually have nuclear plants. And it's, it's almost ridiculous. I don't know if I, I, why I didn't see this before. The weapons itself are not really our biggest problem. Our biggest problem in the earth is the nuclear plants. Okay? Is the nuclear plants. The nuclear plants that I looked at all over the world, all of them are on, and they, they, they had to have done this on purpose to show you they're di directly under Satan. All the nuclear plants are on an earthquake fault line. Every last one. And you notice in Africa, there's no nuclear plants. And they be given messages. You notice in the movie 2012, all the billionaires had to put their money together to get to a safe haven, and the safe haven was Africa. You notice that? The biggest, now the weapons are going to be used as a state of emergency. It's going to wipe out a lot of people. Only 10% of the earth is going to, 10% of Israel is going to live through this. 10% of the earth, really. But when I seen where the, where the nuclear plants were all over, this was strategic. They have us looking at the missiles and all that. When really, it's what you would call the natural disasters that, they, that will be created is what the prophecies were speaking of. When Christ was telling us, woe unto the inhabitants of the sea and the earth because the devil has come down because he knows we have a short time. So he was giving us prophecies based on the ingenuity of science. Satan would give the elite powers to destroy us all over the earth. That, those were the prophecies in Matthew 24. He was telling us what Satan would do against us. So that's what we're looking at in prophecy. The technology that Satan gave them. Satan showed them what to do to destroy mankind. The missiles, all that going to be work, but those are all a pretext to not only destroy a number of people, but to destroy the land so it's not inhabitable. And then, then, at the very end, all the elite powers are going to try to go into the areas that they didn't destroy with nuclear plants. 
You notice the last battleground is where? Africa. That's the last battleground. That's the last place. Still rich in nourishment, still untapped resources they haven't touched. So now they're looking to eradicate us all together in the Africa because that's what they're looking at for their refuge once a lot of the smoke clears. Once the smoke clears. One moment. Someone says, maybe it's time for us to band together, join together, and make a vow unto the Lord, just put it out there. Yeah, it's time for us to come together. Most definitely. But you gotta, Christ told us that we must be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Filipinos, the Filipinos are also Naphtali. If the whole thing is, I'm, we're just showing you predominantly the areas the tribes are in, have went to, predominantly. All right, but the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. I mean, you got the Anu tribe that's in Japan; they're also Israel. You you have the uh, you have the you, you have Chinese dynasties. That created the martial arts. They were from the ten tribes of Israel. You have the Samurais. That's what you get Samaria from. The Samurais of Japan were from the children of Israel. So I'm just showing you those that are scattered in predominant areas. But of course, we're throughout the four corners of the earth. Is Africa safe now? I have a lot of questions here. I need you to help me here, Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you all have any questions here before I answer some of these? Are you all okay? All right. Help me with some of these questions, Lloyd. Uh, this is coming from the Owens Family One. This is uh, Genesis. Where at? Okay, go ahead. Did you want to start this one? Yeah, there's some before that. Okay. Uh, some would ask, where do the righteous go before the bosom of Abraham? Right there. Oh, okay. It says elder. Chile is also a part of the tribe of Asher. Yes. Go ahead. It says elder. Where did the righteous go before the bosom of Abraham? The, where the righteous go, the righteous is in the same place as anyone else that passes. You go through a seven day period in which you uh, see the good and the evil. And then after that, the judgment, you're taken into habitation, which is either torment or the bosom of Abraham. So it's everyone, you have seven days of our time to behold the righteousness and the unrighteousness. Okay? What's next? Uh, this is a uh, woman of Judah. I think it's one before that. Can you explain 2 Timothy 7, 28, when it says, what is the 400 years after mm -hmm. seven days? Uh, that 400 years is speaking of a future prophecy because that's 450 BC. All right, so that's the Most High telling Ezra that in, the, in 400 years Christ will come with his disciples, then he'll die. It's not speaking of the kingdom. That 400 years, you have to realize Ezra was 450 BC. So he was speaking of future prophecy going into Christ, not, of, not Christ's return. All right? What's the next one? Someone says, is Africa safe now? Or have they poisoned and genocided too much, too much land? Well, they, they, they have poisoned and destroyed the land. And it tell you about the prophecy of wormwood, which is just the poisonings of waters. But there's things that you can do. There's clean infiltration systems one can get to clean their own water if necessary. Um... I wouldn't suggest anyone just going into a place without any, without some help with, with church members of those who are of like mind. Okay. Uh, we have a brother, uh, Kuda, 
who's who, who's in uh, right now Kuda's in Zimbabwe uh, we have brother Kuda in Zimbabwe and, and he's doing real good there with some people there now he went there by himself really and he ha he already have a following and have lessons being done there now we have uh, brother Zahar who went to uh, Tanzania and I know that he's doing work there now and spreading the truth there. Uh, but it's, it's not going to be easy in some of those African areas. There is some African areas which, are, which, which is clean, which is very clean. Clean water, clean cities, everything, but they're not publicized. All right? So if you're going to go into one of those lands, you make sure you do your research and, and, and you're not by yourself. All right. What's the next one? Uh, the next one is from Owen's family one. Uh, Genesis 32 and 25, when Jacob fought against the angel that blessed him, what does it mean when he, when he popped his thigh out of place? Well, he popped his thigh out of place. That's, that's just what he did. Because Jacob wasn't going to stop until he received the blessing. Mm -hmm. So that angel knocked his joint out of place. All right. He, he ended up receiving a blessing, you know, but, you know, he, he got, you know, he received some serious physical damage right there. <laughs> I know some brothers say, well, that's why Israel walked with the swag, and, but I, I, I don't go into that philosophizing. That's why Israel walked with a, you know, with a, with a little limp. I'm like, I don't know about that, bro. But you got Israel out there saying all that. That's why Israel walked with a little bob now because of the angel. I'm like, there's other prophecies we can use to show with Israel. What else you got there? Uh, this is a man of Judah. Are the testaments of the twelve patriarchs is they a or are they a book to read? Yeah, the twelve patriarchs are are a good a good record. If you get the ones by R. H. Charles and the Pseudepigrapha, they are real good in record. Yeah, all the Old Testament reads the majority of the Old Testament reads that were part of the Septuagint and the Pseudepigrapha are good readings. It's the New Testament stuff you have to really watch out for. Like the Book of Barnabas, which is totally total garbage, and the other records they try to use to bring. They they have one called the the something of Mary. What's that? The assumption of, of the Virgin Mary. Oh my goodness! What what mess? The Catholic Church came through and just came through with just a bunch of mess. All right, there was no Book of Mary. Okay, Mary was Christ's mother. She, and that, that's a blessed of all women. I mean, that's hey, to, to say you had Christ, that's a blessing in itself. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to make her out to be a, a, a goddess. And, and they focus more towards Mary than, than Christ himself. What else we have there? This is uh, wise over strength. Where at? Yeah. Okay. It says uh, concerning the Book of Mormon, how do we know what prophets are correct and which ones are not? Which verses are correct and which ones are not? All the prophets are correct, and really the majority of the stories are correct when it comes to names of the tribes and the names of the people. But personally, I wouldn't go into it because. I was able to read the when I say I wouldn't go in, I wouldn't suggest someone that, that ain't learned in the Bible to be able to discern doctrine to go into the book without some, some level of oversight. And the reason is I, I read the book and you can easily see the stuff they put in because it's Christian overtone. And you know the North American Indians wasn't speaking of, of Christian theology. So everything the Christians try to push in, push in theology to the Catholic Church, they inject it in certain places. But the stories are correct. Even the fact that one of the priests in the book from the Golden Tablet said that Christ came over. 
all right, and, and spoke with the priest. What else here? This is uh, from Aria Nahem. It says, uh, are Filipinos from any tribe like Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, the Philippines are from the tribe of Naphtali. And you notice another thing I looked into. The majority of places America have bases mm -hmm. is where the children of Israel are. <laughs> it's the Roman Empire looking to destroy the, the woman seed. See, you have, to realize, you, you have to understand their concept. Their concept is this. This is their concept. If there's one of the children of Israel left in the earth, anywhere, that one seed will receive the promises of Abraham. And Esau is ruling, so he can't go for that. So he has to find a way to get all of Israel in a database to destroy them all as much as he can. And while doing so, he must slow down reprocreation so there's no other children he must worry about. So he, he must sterilize and kill off all of the children of Israel before the coming of Christ or Esau will be banished and the prophecies will fall. His empire will fall. This is the way Esau is looking at it. It's either my empire or my little brother Jacob's empire. So he set up a military base every place we reside and they came up with eugenics and all types of programs the homosexual agenda to stop us from reprocreating and, and made us sinful and immoral so that the heads can be taken from off of us uh, as a pretext to destroy us all together. So they're looking to kill and destroy a bloodline. And this is deeper than just what I've mentioned, it's just strictly the 12 tribes of Israel. That's just the tip of the iceberg with, with, with that. A lot of us, we may look at an Asian person and be like, well, you know, he might be this. A lot of, a lot of these people are us. The Bible tells you we are the sands of the sea that cannot be numbered. So the Most High have a representation of all people of his creation. But at the end of the day, they all want to be Israel. And the Gentiles that fight against Israel at the end of the thousand years, when Satan is loose, they will join with Satan and will be utterly destroyed. Revelation, the 20th chapter. What else we got? Uh, this is uh, Mr. Success 99. Where, Mr. Who? Uh, Mr. Success 99. Okay. How, how was there 10 tribes coming into the new world if Dan fell as a tribe? Well, you have to realize when you, when you count them, you got Judah, Benjamin, Levi. You got them all. You got 12. And you got Dan as 13. Okay? So that would leave three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So when you look at 10 tribes, clearly, you got Dan also that came over with some of the 12 tribes of Israel, but they're small in number. So they didn't really receive a place for the small number of Dan that did come over. And we're going to go into that in the Dan lesson. It was, they wasn't in numbers. Uh, in number compared to the other tribes. They wasn't large in number, the Danites that did come over with the uh, North American Indians and others. And I'm going to go through that in the Dan lesson. The majority of Dan stayed over and became judges over the land. Only a small amount of Dan came over. But Dan did come over, but not a lot of them. Okay? What's the next one here? This is uh, Ayawab 1. Who that? Uh, Ayawab. Shalom, Elder. Right here? Uh, okay, are you up? Uh, would you happen to know of any history pertaining to Zebulun in that in his testament he said that the Most High gave him the technology first that allowed a boat to sail on water? Uh, I didn't look into that explicitly, strictly on Zebulun, but that'll be, that'll be good. Just like I'm going into one and Dan, we probably need just need four lessons strictly on each tribe. So I'm going to look to put that to, put that together there. What's next? Uh, this is Mar Bear Three. So it's 
surely a part of the tribe of Ash or Chile, a part of the tribe of Asher, or they aren't with us at all. Chile is a part of Asher. Yes. What's the next one? Yeah. What about South America? What places are safe? Someone says, how is there still 12 tribes if Dan was excluded? Well, you have to look at the fact that Manasseh and Ephraim, all right, they both became Jacob's sons in Genesis, the 48th chapter, in which he adopted Joseph's son. So instead of Joseph being one, Joseph became two. Okay? And at one point, Levi wasn't considered a tribe. He was in suburbs of each tribe until the fall of, of Babylon. And then Levi went from all those suburbs and came in Judea. Okay? What's next? Uh, this is... And went into Judea. Excuse me. Uh, Katie Monk Moyne. Uh, what about South America? What places are safe? Well, when it comes to South America, there's a lot of nice south, uh, uh, safe places near the waters. Okay. Um, you got Costa Rica. I mean, Brazil is pretty bad. They didn't totally Babylon Brazil all the way out. Um, but there's, there's a lot of safe places. We got some, some brothers and sisters in, in Costa Rica in different places. Argentina is pretty nice. You understand? There, there's even some parts of Mexico that's good, but but, it, but, but there's a lot of, of South America that's pretty nice. All right. Someone ask. Uh, someone asked if Danites or Ephraim. No, Danites aren't Ephraim. Okay, let's go to El, uh, let's go to Isaiah eleven and twelve. Someone asked, can I break that down? The Danites are Danites, and Ephraim is Ephraim. They're separate. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter eleven, uh, verse twelve. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. That ensign is Christ. The ensign is Christ. Go to the first verse. In Isaiah, where you at? Uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Go ahead. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's Christ. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Most High Ahiah. Go to the 10th verse. Verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand forth as an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. That's Christ. All right. And when it says to him shall the Gentiles seek, we know that's predominantly speaking of the ten tribes who left off and were scattered amongst the Gentiles. All right. What else we have there? Uh, the next one is uh, Neo 196. It says, was Ariad the first to receive revelation on the twelve tribes? Was Ariah the first to receive revelation on the twelve tribes? No, he wasn't the first to receive revelation on the twelve tribes. I mean, there's been people that, that have been breaking down the twelve tribes before Ariah. But was he instrument in this time? Absolutely. Okay. There's a few things with the twelve tribes that that, that isn't correct accordingly with, with the the breakdown that came through that particular school, but that, that lesson that he taught 
a lot of information came from it. He just didn't, he just didn't have uh, Naphtali correct, and he didn't have uh, Reuben correct. All right? So don't forget, the Most High never tempt any man to not tell the truth or bring forth the truth. All right? What's next? This is uh, OBKD. What's that? Uh, OBKD. Okay. Uh, Shalom, Elder. Which country is going to be standing when Yeshua comes? Well, Isaiah 11, where we were just at, are showing you all the, the people, all the, the land masses in which Christ will actually gather his people. In order for people to be gathered from these land masses, they must be standing upon Christ's return. So when you look at Isaiah, the 11th chapter, it gives you a precise uh, understanding of the lands that will be intact. All of them. Egypt will be intact. All that land that was originally part of the Eden area, Ethiopia all the way down into uh, northern Africa will be intact. Africa itself will be intact. Why? Because it was a wilderness for a refuge for a time, time, and a dividing of times, which is a dispensation between Christ's death and his return. So all of Africa will be intact. Even Europe will be intact. But Christ is going to destroy Europe. Someone says, just to add, what he says, doing pagan thing. Uh, maybe suggesting doing uh, pagan things, given at each of our local or closest Indian river reservation, meet and discuss prophecy. That would be a good idea. That would be a good idea to, to reach out to the brothers of Gad during Thanksgiving. I, I remember years ago I went down to Plymouth Rock. That would be a good place to go during Thanksgiving when, when all the North American Indians come together down, in, uh, down on Plymouth Rock. Why is it that the other tribes have their own land, yet Judah has none? Well, number one, Judah is at the neck of his enemy. So he's, Judah is living in his enemy's land. What are the areas on the outskirts of Israel can we go to? And what if we are alone? Well, there's no reason to be alone if you can link in with someone who, who are in like mind. So that's what, what my suggestion would be first. Christ says, with two or more together, he's in the midst. So you want to come together with those in like mind, uh, in the spirit together. And then make an effort together with the, with the church if possible. 